This week on Capitol Report, the gloves come off at the Republican debate. This could take all day. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> and the hits keep on coming. He should be ashamed for putting out a proposal that he knows the numbers don't work. <laughs> what is his deal? You should be embarrassed, Mr. Stemmerman, and you should think before you speak. Don't mess with the bull, young man. You'll get the horns. While Democrats mix it up as well. The problem with Ned's answer is it has a level of equivocation in it. This is something we more or less agree on. Let's uh, shake hands and move forward on it. I don't hear any equivocation. Governor Malloy gets the toll study no one seems to want. The study we authorized today is a necessary step to making sure that we have a transportation system that works now and into the future. Connecticut residents told the legislators, we don't want that. The controversy over taking a knee moves from the NFL to the Haddam Board of Selectmen. And Tim Herbst visits his glory days. I'm Tim Herbst. Growing up playing football, I learned you never sit on the sidelines. I can do it, coach! We'll have to see about that. Capital Report starts now. Welcome to Capital Report. I am Tom Dutchick. We are so glad you are spending part of your Sunday morning with us and the power panel as we kick around the world of Connecticut politics alongside Jen Snyder, Metro Square Group, Senior Vice President. There you something. go. Ray right, Gregorso, <laughs> Managing Partner for Morning. Board. For, I didn't get to Global Strategy Group yet. Liz Crouch, Republican Strategy, and the big dog. Chris Healy, former Republican State Party Chairman. Couldn't catch a pass if you dropped it in there my lap. There you go. <laughs> hey, guys, the last two Republican gubernatorial debates have become the Bob and Dave show, guys. And the wealthy dudes continue to slam one another in debates and television ads as well. Stimmerman is attacking Stefanowski's Democratic ties and ripping apart his plan to phase out the state income tax, while Bob Stefanowski points to Stimmerman's lack of experience as a job creator. Watch this. He should be ashamed for putting out a proposal that he knows the numbers don't work. After the way you've handled yourself, turning this campaign into a smear campaign over last week, you say I should be embarrassed? You should be embarrassed, Mr. Stemmerman, and you should think before you speak. This guy has bought stocks his entire life. He's never run anything. You know why employee funds like the state of Connecticut are bankrupt right now? Because people like you trade in their stock, living in mansions in Greenwich with thousands of bathrooms, Losing money for the people in the pension plans. Bob, you may not have remembered, but this is a Republican primary. And in a Republican primary, we actually celebrate success. In a Republican party, we believe in free enterprise. We believe in investing people's capital and generating a return. We don't t toss out epithets from a, a poll-tested uh, uh, claims about uh, disparaging people because they've been successful. Well, while well, those guys duked it out, the three other candidates took the opportunity to throw some gasoline on the old fire. Watch this. Let me just tell you something, David. When I was out there serving the United States military, and you were a registered Democrat up in Massachusetts, I was all over this country defending your very right to be a Democrat. What would make you want to leave the Republican Party three weeks before the 2016 election and become a Democrat and not vote in that election? What would make you not vote in any election in 16 years? What would make you become a Republican <clears throat> one month before you announced your candidacy for governor? This is about, the heart of it is, leadership and character. Leadership and character in your governor. And I think we saw some examples up here, which you all have to pick what path you want to go down. Well, my panel, watching those clips, <laughs> they are chomping to get at this. I had to, I had to shut them up while we're watching these things. Or who wants at it? Looks like Stefanowski was going to deck him. Like it I did. was it ready for him aggressive. to like pull it back and right across the, the chin. The visual there was not a good one. I think for either of them, you don't want to sort of be standing up, talking down to somebody. You don't want to be in David's position of, you know, having to sit there with somebody pointing in your face, vice versa. I, you know, I don't know um, how much people are paying attention to some of this. I mean, you know, this is the issue when you're dealing with a primary in the middle of the summer. Everyone's on vacation. They're, you know, doing their camps and, you know, worried about Selling what their stocks. activities are. <laughs> which stocks. Not Selling. me. Not, not me. But, but you know, it's, it's hard to get everybody to kind of pay attention to this the, stuff, the, although the, the mail won't stop. I'll tell that's you, for sure. the people that do pay attention to it, that we talk to, yes. live with, interact with, uh, are fed up with it. And I think part of the problem here is that 
you have people here that have never run before and they take this template that says oh I have to do these things to knock the next guy down and so I take these frivolous sort of issues while they're important to many core voters it doesn't get back to the idea of driving people excited to be excited about your right. candidacy no one gets excited about someone who keeps calling somebody out about something as petty as 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 these guys are talking about tell me what you're gonna do to inspire the electorate to follow you into the trenches against the Democrats who will not give up this government at the point of a gun tell me that and the real tell me and that. the real takeaway is that Bowden is the front runner the polling yeah. shows that and he gets out of all of these debates without anyone really <laughs> taking shots at him you have Stefanowski and Stemmerman basically throwing so much mud at each other that I think the voters can't even ascertain which it's, attack is coming well, from whom and who's the person who's the I mean, Democrat. Liz, it's the same attack think, for both of them. It's almost like it's almost like two alpha males kind of going well, after each other to see if you can out alpha each other. But their other. problem is, is that, that they have the same attack on each other. They're right. both attacking each other. They're both Democrats and they're attacking their business record. And I think that that's just going to get lost. It's into never white good in a Republican so, primary to have to be explaining away why you were a registered Democrat. And so for either of them, that's not a good place to be in. I think the bigger issue is uh, where they are on the ballot, they're right next to each other. Stefanowski, Stemmerman, there, there is a lot of confusion Cut over their the names, clock. right? Yeah. And, and so, um, you know, they're right now, how are they differentiating? Well, they were probably each splitting each their votes before that, even, too. The, 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 the problem with the name is a problem. Let's, let's right. just, whether or not these guys really just nuke each other. Yeah. Into oblivion, and does that open up a yes. lane? But there's nothing to, to nuke. Else. There's nothing to nuke. In other words, well, they're the spending a lot of money trying. Well, I know that, but but it still comes down to this issue of of um, what uh, what is the core issue that people care about? It's the economy. It's it's right. income disparity. It's it's lack of uh, home values still soft. These are the things people really want to hear about. How you're going to make their Values lives better? Tweets. And Bouton just wins by the fact that all these people are making all this white noise all right, and two weeks still there. Two weeks to go, guys. Hey, guys, on the other side, Democrats Ned Lamont and Joe Gannon had their debate at Sacred Heart University last Thursday with both candidates taking shots at Governor Malloy. Smart move, seeing that Republicans are looking to paint either candidate as Malloy 2.0. And when the conversation turned to a proposed MGM casino in Bridgeport, well, two fun common ground. Watch this. I was pretty clear that I support the idea if somebody wants to invest $700 million, you know, I will support it. I think it's going to be open process. It's definitely going to include the tribes and make sure we have a fair process going forward. But we had areas of agreement taken. So are you saying now we can shake hands that as governor, should you get elected, you will get behind, propose an a, a open and transparent process for a, a, a casino, similar to the ones we proposed, for Bridgeport and get behind it and push it with the legislature to make it happen for jobs for Connecticut. $700 million invested in the city, no strings attached, no uh, incentives uh, and bribes provided by the estate of Connecticut. Yes, I would. Well, a new morning council poll came out last week. Their, their third quarter poll has Governor Loy with a 21% approval rating. Roy, 71%. Still above 20. Dis no issues. Wow. Dis wow. Dis there. Dis he sent a thank you card to the yeah. governor of Oklahoma, <laughs> <laughs> who <laughs> finally <laughs> made him yeah. second. Everybody in my house still supports well, Listen, okay. let's, let's talk about that debate okay. for okay. a second. Okay, sure. Well, so, that that I, led into that. With thank you. you. I don't think host. anything <laughs> has happened in any of these debates. I think they've debated three times. Um, Joe Gannam and Ned Lamont, and I don't think anything's happened to alter the fundamental dynamic of the race. I think Ned is a better debater than he was in 2010, um, and I think the fundamental dynamic here is he's ahead, probably by a lot, and these debates really haven't changed But there anything. was a shift this week, too. Earlier in the week, there was an event that got pretty ugly. Um, people who were family members of Jason Negron were at the event. Um, he was uh, somebody who was shot by police violence in Bridgeport, and they have shown up to you know, protest against Ganem, and Ganem supporters got in fights with these people, and it was kind of an ugly moment, and I think that um, throughout this week, it's kind of been Lamont just being steady, and kind of Ganem going a little bit too far and over the edge. I think Ganem actually scored big. He got he got a commitment for the Bridgeport thing. He's, his work <laughs> is done. He, so is mine. Yeah, so is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the check? You know, get the check done. The I, subtle, the subtle but, dig but, from Lamont about, about Bribes, though, did anybody no, catch that? That was right, yeah. That was yeah. nice. I mean, I, just, I, I think he actually didn't plan that, but I do. But I'm glad. Oh, he's, so I'm glad. I've, he's, I've I'm glad. I'm glad your guy or their guy is now coming out against the policy of corporate bribery uh, to bring businesses to Connecticut under the Malloy administration. I'm very encouraged. I some good news so has sarcasm. happened in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> nice so it's hard for you to deal. He's, he's against I just, corporate I don't bribery. think these debates have changed anything. Well, I do think one thing. There was a. And I'm not a big fan of him normally, but an editorial in the day where. The, 
Canham is getting these sort of glowing editorials from people. At least if that's something he can Because they're away. trying to keep him in the race. That's well, why. I don't know. They, he seems to have charmed them with his natural skills. Is, yeah. there, is there an apathy, do you think, among Lamont voters that they're just so, sort of resigned to the fact that Ganim is going to win? Uh, well, that I think that's Lamont why Ganim is going so extreme at some points, like the event on Monday. I think that makes people feel like, okay, we really have to get behind Lamont at this point. So I think that's why this week was a little interesting, that people before were kind of never too excited about Lamont, and, you know, uh, there wasn't a ton of energy, but where there was for the supporters who were Ganim supporters. But I think this week was a little scary for some folks. And I think that might change in the general election. I don't think most Democratic primary voters think Joe Ganim's going to win, so there's not much to get exercised about. In the general election, when there's a clear choice between Ned Lamont and a Republican, I think they'll be All right, more excited. Let's leave there, guys. Republicans right. will be excited in the general right, guys. election. Next up on Cap Report, the governor gets his approval for the toll study. Is this the right move for Connecticut's future? We'll talk about it with Chief Political Correspondent Mark Davis when we get back. Don't go away.